Hey, this is Alex from Diz His. Just want to apologize ahead of time for our audio quality. We had some contact tracing going on and we wanted to be safe. And one of our audio qualities were not as good as we like. So we apologize for that. Enjoy the episode. Please stand clear of the doors. Yes, look what's coming up, guys. The Contemporary Resort. We're about to go through the Contemporary. This is like my favorite part. Jen, what do you think of the Contemporary? I like it. It's 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 all right. Jen, we've got the food. We've got the view. We've got the monorail going through the building. We've got the, the sound, the sight, the smell. Welcome to episode 90 of the Diz His Podcast. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Jen. Today we will be giving the his on the Contemporary Resort. We have a special guest with us today, Andrew from Sorcerer Radio. Yeah, Joe, thanks so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Um, I'm a uh, voice actor. I'm a part of the Sorcerer Radio team that you can hear over at srsounds.com or download our app uh, from uh, you know, the App Store. Um, source of radio, all Disney music, all that, all day long, um, play, uh, different, uh, songs from different, um, different parts of the parks all around Walt Disney world, including the resorts, the attractions. Um, you really should check it out over at source of radio. I do voiceover work for them. I've got a show called touring the world. Um, you can find me on Instagram at touring the world, TTW. And, uh, we just take you on a virtual t- trip around Walt Disney world once a week on Thursdays at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, t- Eastern Standard Time, as well as in the evening at 8 p.m. So if you like Disney World, you want to take an escape uh, from the world of today and uh, go back home to Disney World, uh, you should definitely check it out. Awesome, awesome. And, uh, you know, I, when we did our, our spotlight, which you can find on our webpage, uh, we, we, t- we had a little talk about the contemporary and how much you really love the contemporary resort. So that's, this is the reason, you know, I figure we can – do a show about the it's my number one favorite resort show it's my yeah. number one favorite resort and and when you said that i was like you know we need to uh have Andrew i've stayed on. at a lot of them joe i've stayed at a lot of them how many oh gosh you, you said a spot. lot man you should have a number right off the top of your head <laughs> oh gosh um i've never stayed at any of the dvc uh hotels over by disney springs i've not stayed at um oh golly i think that's it I think I've covered it all. No, never stayed at Boardwalk. I've okay. never stayed at Boardwalk. Okay. I've done Swan yeah. Dolphin, the other ones over uh, by Crescent Lake. I, you know something contemporary just takes me back to when I was eight years old and went uh, uh, to Disney World for the first time. I think mm-hmm. that's what the magic is. That's why I love that resort so much. And why we're going to get into all the great details here on the show. We are. We sure are. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and first, let's uh, start off with what do you think of the Contemporary Resort, Alex? Um, I've never, I don't, I've never stayed there, but of course I've been to the Contemporary, and it's a great looking hotel. I love riding the monorail through it. Uh, the restaurants there are nice. I've never eaten it. I've eaten at one of them, I think, and the rest not so much. But what I've learned about the Contemporary, uh, it's pretty awesome. I love how nice it looks, even though it was, you know, an original hotel for the area. Yep. Yep. Okay. How about you, Jen? Um, it's, it's one of my higher ones. Definitely. It's not my top three. Um, not for any particular reason other than there are just other resorts that I enjoy more. Um, we've stayed there finally the first time, um, in December in the Bay Lake towers and enjoyed it. But I mean, it's always been one of the go-to ones, especially with chef Mickey's. Um, I remember going to like, um, it was some sort of Disney convention or something like that, like in the late nineties, early two thousands there, that was pretty neat. So I've got a lot of, you know, cool memories there and everything like that. But if you were to tell me right now, you know, Jen, you can book a weekend at any resort on property. It wouldn't be in my top three. It would probably be in my top five. Okay. Okay. How about you, Andrew? You must, uh, what do you think of it? We obviously know that you really enjoy it. Can you add anything to that? Okay. So, when you're approaching Magic Kingdom, okay, Let, let's go back a few years when before that construction at the toll plaza of the Magic Kingdom entrance, okay? okay? You always had to drive through the toll plaza. You go on the right, uh, far right side of the road, and as you approach the Magic Kingdom, 
area. All of a sudden, you go underneath the um, uh, that water bridge, you mm-hmm. know, where um, Bay Lake connects to Seven Seas Lagoon. You drive under that, you come up, and kind of like tunnel view at Yosemite National Park, all of a sudden, boom, there it is, the Contemporary Resort. So it had that welcome presence to it mm-hmm. for me as a kid. But go back to when I was eight years old in my thought process. Okay, first off, when you're eight years old and you've never been to Disney World before, the monorail is the coolest thing you've ever seen in your life, especially if you love trains, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's a cool-looking train. Mm-hmm. Uh, with this voice actor who says, please stand clear of the doors. I, that, that just sticks with you for some reason. I don't know why it does, but as an eight-year-old, it just sticks with you. There's the monorail aspect of it. So then you see this hotel that's unlike any hotel you've ever seen back home in Ohio, where I'm from, and you have a monorail going right through the middle of the hotel. Now, how awesome is that for a young guest visiting Walt Disney World for the first time? Oh, well, I can that tell you that's pretty big, right? Yeah, oh, no it's, doubt about it. That's huge. Yeah. That's it's huge. Like, it's iconic. It, it's, it's iconic. Yeah, it's, yeah for sure. It's, 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 it's amazing, right? And you, you've never seen it before. So <laughs> fast forward um, another year for my, our second trip. We went back-to-back trips from uh, 1992 to 1993. You get to go inside because now, I believe in late 1992 or early 1993, maybe we have the history of it, is when Chef Mickey's transferred from uh, the Disney Marketplace, now Disney Springs, over to the Contemporary Resort. And now you get to walk inside and you get to see this huge, huge building uh, from the inside with this cool looking painting that stretches all the way to the top of the uh, resort. And it just sticks with you. And then you get to stay there finally when you're in college and, um, uh, you know, with your family. And it just, it's an it's an awesome thing, but there's lots of more reasons why I love it. Just besides that very aspect of the aura of the hotel when you uh, first see it for the first time. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, when you, uh, when one of the Jen, reasons- Jen has this has this uh, moved into your top three now after hearing all that. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm at least you're, it's got to be four now, right? It, it could after be hearing that. It could Monorail. be monorail, big building. You've never seen it before. The history. I, 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 I'm I, four and a half. If you ask, if you ask nine-year-old Jen, uh, the answer, of course, would be yes. But after staying at all these different places, that's why it's kind of changed a little bit. So, I mean, I loved the time that we stayed there, and it's definitely one I think we've been to that resort most frequently this year. Well, during you know. Yeah, I'd say within the past year or so, only because we eat at those restaurants frequently, you know, like the wave and stuff like that. So, I mean, it is solidly in top five. It is. But I'm a Wilderness Lodge girl. I love the look of it. It's my number one. Wilderness Lodge is amazing. Just not as good as contemporary. (laughs) 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 No, Wilderness Lodge, I think, is our family's uh, number one resort, I think, as a family. I think. Beautiful. Okay, so my opinion is, you know, just like Andrew said, when you're you are an eight year old boy, you know, seven year old kid, you walk into the contemporary resort and you see that monorail go through the resort and you're like, wait a minute, hold on. We got this big monorail. I mean, I can have a hotel room in one of these places, walk outside my room at any time of the day, you know, almost all night and see the monorail going through this resort. It blows your mind. And I remember being that young and be like, I want to stay here. Like, I want to stay at this place. Right. And, um, you know, I recently just got DVC a couple of years ago and I'm not going to lie to you. I was kind of bummed out when I found out I couldn't stay in the contemporary because we, I, mean, I can stay a Bay Lake tower, which is attached to the contemporary, but I can't wake up outside my Bay Lake, <laughs> you know, r- my room and walk outside. And there's a monorail right there. Like in my, that was like my goal in life when I was younger. It's like, I wanted to be, <laughs> I wanted to stay at the contemporary. Which I, I might be able to do one day, you know, in the future. So I can still go ahead and, you know, go stay at a room there. But I love the Contemporary Resort. I mean, we're going to give it a let's, – let's go ahead and rate this thing. Let's yeah. rate it, okay? It. I'm rating it a 10. Let me explain why, okay? <laughs> I don't know any resorts that, ha- that has a monorail going through it. There we go. I'm just going to say it right there, 10. Okay, Alex, you want to rate it? Uh, I give it a um, – I'm going to give it a 8 because I have not stayed there. Once I stay there and I know how nice it is by staying there, then it'll probably bump up to a 10. 
But I'm just gonna give it eight just because I haven't stayed there yet. I don't want to give it something that it hasn't earned yet. Okay, that's fair enough, I guess. But I mean, go ahead, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I will give it it. I will give it a nine, only because it's not my perfect resort. But again, because it's in the top five, I'll go nine. Okay, how about you, Andrew? I'm giving this a Sorcerer Radio 15, guys, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> because you got the monorail driving through it. You've got the overlooking the Magic Kingdom. You know, we haven't even talked about that. Yeah, that's but true. That's right. true. That's true. View. If you have a balcony view and you're facing the Magic Kingdom, I don't care if you're on the fourth floor or on the 15th floor. Or, guys, history. How many floors is it? I don't know. 15, I believe. 15. There you go. You're overlooking the Magic Kingdom. Oh, and by the way, you're also overlooking the Grand Floridian. You're overlooking the Polynesian. You're hearing the train whistle as it approaches Main Street USA's train right, man. You're hearing the boat whistles from the ferry boats, from the launch craft, from the uh, cruising boats that go back and forth from Jen, the uh, Wilderness Lodge. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've, got, you've got it all. You've got all the senses. It takes your breath away. If you're laying down, you're going to bed after a great day at the park, you open your balcony door and you just listen. You turn off the TV and you just listen. You can hear those train whistles, the boat whistles, the horns. The water pageant. The Don't buses, about the water pageant. You can hear the, the water buses, pageant. The electrical water pageant. Absolutely. Yep. And and the walking distance. We haven't even mentioned walking distance. Joe, you're only 15 minutes away from the Magic Kingdom. I, actually, no. I, Dude, I, like I five minutes, minutes away, man. You're, no, yeah. You're eight minutes. Yeah. Nine minutes. Yeah. Tops. Yeah. You're walking. Yeah. No doubt about it. Real you quick. Know, before, I, I, I only wish that the Magic, I only wish that the monorail stopped at the Magic Kingdom first, though. Because now you have to do the entire loop, the, the TTC, and then Polynesian and then Grand Floridian and then finally to the Magic Kingdom. So you've got what three or four stops there yeah. before you're finally at your destination. Which you're in a monorail, so what what, what are you really complaining about? It arrived mm -hmm. at your hotel inside the resort. So real quick so, before well, go ahead, Jen. Go ahead. No, I go was ahead. gonna say, listen, I'm gonna tell you right now, Andrew, if if the sorcerer radio gig doesn't work out for you, you just need to go ahead and start up your own travel business. Cause let me tell you, the way that you describe the contemporary, I feel like anybody that would call in and like, hey, we're gonna book our Disney vacation, you would completely and totally hands down just give them this magical experience because the way that you describe things, like you can just tell you wholeheartedly believe in it so just keep that in mind as a backup is it is it in your now you're in your top uh, top four gym <laughs> like back in the top three? <laughs> i'm selling it hard here jen come you on you are you are listen i'm, at four. I'm gonna I four? come on four. <laughs> i'll tell you around. listen the i'm gonna view. keep we i'm gonna keep you in expense or suspense we haven't even we haven't even talked about the food okay, oh that's we true we've gotten to that part that's true so Number four now, maybe. Listen, how about I reveal them? Um, I'll reveal my top five at the end. Laying down, <laughs> laying down in the in your bed after a long day, the kids are asleep, and you you just crack that patio. You know your sliding door, you slide it open. What's it? Is that what it is? Yeah, the sliding balcony, door. Balcony, that's the word I was looking for. And you just listen to the sounds of the Walt Disney World Resort, and you're not at work. You're not back home. You are. Ah, <laughs> you're right. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I'll reveal it at the end. All right, I'm wor I'm working here. I'm working hard. <laughs> All right. Welcome aboard the Walt Disney World monorail. 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 Welcome aboard the Highway in the Sky. Please hold on. Please hold on. Thank you. Let's get to the his on the Contemporary Resort. No smoking, please. Disney's Contemporary Resort, previously known as Contemporary Resort Hotel, is an award-winning Walt Disney World Resort in Bay Lake, Florida. This deluxe resort opened October 1, 1971, and has 655 rooms. The iconic A-shaped resort is best known for having a monorail stop inside the lobby on the fifth floor. The resort is located adjacent to Disney's Magic Kingdom, and is just a rock throw away from the Magic Kingdom's bus terminal. 50 years, guys. Yeah, that's crazy, that's right? crazy. And it wasn't, and I believe, if I remember hearing it right, I, didn't um, Polynesian and Contemporary open about a month before the park uh, opened in October? Didn't it open like maybe in August or September, I think? 
Well, this one, as a, you know, it's like a, as, as like a preview or something. Uh, maybe probably as a preview. I wouldn't see. I, why. I, I think, you know, a, a month or so ahead of time. So you're thinking this summer, 50 years. And, uh, I, I remember I was on the college program in 2007 when, uh, ground broke on what was the North wing of the contemporary, which is now where Bay Lake tower is. And I, I remember thinking, ah, gosh, are we, you know, they're messing with a classic, but like so many times, you kind of just kind of bite the lip and say, you know, the Imagineers know exactly what they're doing. And, uh, you know, the results speak for itself. I've never stayed at Bay Lake Tower. I think it was a uh, it's a nice uh, companion to such an iconic uh, part of Walt Disney World. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I wish the monorail was going through Bay Lake. I'm not going to lie. I couldn't just put it like on the monorail loop and have the monorail go through Bay Lake. I mean, come on. Why, what were they thinking? They could have done it, right? No, no. But listen, that walkway between Bay Lake and the Contemporary—that's a nice walk. It is. You're right. You're one hundred percent right. The, Jenna, are you talking about this? Is that the Skywalk you're talking about? Mm-hmm. The one that's up high. Yeah. Yeah, that's between the two. It is. Mm-hmm. It's a really nice, right. especially like right as sun setting. It's a very nice walk. And isn't that that uh, entrance? Isn't that uh, right outside of? Yeah, it's right outside the Fantasia gift yes. shop. Yes, it is. So it's mm-hmm. nice. We um, haven't even touched the gift shops. We'll get to it. Walt Disney decided he wanted to open a park on the East Coast and that he needed to own the land around the park so businesses were not able to open up right next to his area, much like at Disneyland. The Florida project was created and the construction of Walt Disney World was in full effect. Along with the parks, Walt knew he needed some hotels inside his land to allow guests a place to stay. The two resorts that were constructed along with the parks were the Polynesian Village and the Contemporary Resort Hotel. The original idea for the Contemporary was an idea Walt had for Epcot. The model design was originally going to be used for a shopping center, which was going to be the focal point of the Epcot Park, even with the monorail going through it. The actual design of the resort was put together by United States Steel Corporation and Los Angeles' Welton Beckett, a close friend of Walt's. Alex, have you gotten a phone call from Ken Burns uh, during your career? No. As far as history goes? Nope. No, you need you need to get you get in touch, man. Yeah, you know, next the next Ken Burns documentary. You need, you need to be one of his historians. He's the Ken Burns is. Um, what you don't know who Ken Burns is? I don't know the he, name. No, I apologize. Really? I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, he he does. He's done all kinds of documentaries uh, for uh, PBS um, going back 30 years. Oh, wow. he did. He just done it on baseball, jazz, country music. Uh, he he got he his. Breakout uh, documentary was the Civil War back, I think, in 1992, 1991. Okay. Um, but he's, he's just a bit, he's just a, a, a real, very respected uh, from all corners of the globe um, uh, documentary filmmaker for PBS. And I think you would be a great fit for the next, if he ever does a uh, Disney. <laughs> you, you got the facts, man. You got the history. You I try to get. I try to get the history. You got the Diz his man. <laughs> he he needs to go ahead and be the next voice on Spaceship Earth, and then maybe Andrew, you can be the voice on uh, the monorail. If I'm lucky enough, I'll be the exit spiel person. The contemporary was built as a 14-story A-frame shape with outer walls that slope inward around an inner atrium area. The design was inspired by cruise ships. They wanted a futuristic feeling resort with a wow factor. Part of that wow factor was making sure every room had a view of the atrium area where Walt wanted the monorail to run through. Modular guests' rooms, designed by renowned steel architecture Donald Wexler, were pre-constructed, fully equipped, and furnished with the doors locked and then lifted into place by crane to be slid into position, much like a drawer sliding into a dresser. Polynesian and Court of Flags were built the same way, except rooms were stacked instead of slid. Walt would check in with United States Steel, who were not only constructing the hotels, but were also the owner of them. He wanted to make sure the hotels were going to be ready to open along with the park. Roy Disney and Dick Nunez went to inspect the construction and found it behind the projected opening date. There are even rumors that Roy found workers napping midday. Roy and Walt had other constructions that were falling behind and had enough. They then fired all their contractors and hired back the crews. They even purchased the hotels from United States Steel. The crews were hired under a new company named Buena Vista Construction. On Disney World's opening day, October 1st, 1971, the Contemporary Resort Hotel was complete and opened. I guess that's the classic. If you want something done right, do it yourself. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how, right. How crazy is that he fi- they fired everyone? The contractors, not the crewmen. But still, man, isn't that crazy? I mean, obviously not because they got the job done when it was already behind. 
I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, I, I can understand why they did it, but I don't know, man. I don't think I, that's just, Joe, have you ever, Joe, have you ever built a house? You got to stay on these contractors, man. <laughs> you really do. You got to stay on these contractors. That uh, is like, that's like lesson number one. Yeah, man. But like, you're, you're, if you're far in, like you're you can't be in. a night, Joe, you're a nice guy. We're all nice guys here. You're, you're deep in, man. Are, are you like, contractors, Joe? These are union guys. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Well, when you're deep in man isn't that a step backwards but i guess they i mean i guess it worked out for them right i guess uh they got it done in time hey i want right? to be you know what you know what i want to do i want to be a fly on the wall in that meeting where they said hey you know what we're going to take a we're going to build a room my, hundreds of miles away three miles and we're going to put on the back of a semi and we're going to ship it to central central florida and then we're going to hoist it on a big crane right it's crazy and we're going to slide it in yeah it's hey, nuts it's funny you say that right can you but can you imagine like i always think about some of these meetings like you know just like you're saying imagine being like a fly on the wall and you're sitting there and it's like crazy ideas just thrown out there can you say i, I want to know what everyone's face was like like they were like what this this person you've been talking about like, <laughs> like mickey mouse can you imagine sitting there like hey guys can you imagine me coming up to you mickey mouse is not even a thing right and i'm like hey guys okay i got an idea for this mouse we're gonna make him a cartoon he's gonna be like a focal point of like everything you guys will look at me like i'm crazy you guys will straight up look at me like you are insane right hey, that was that's that's kind of the the tie-in see roy sent mickey to fire these guys <laughs> Ooh, ouch can you imagine like can you imagine like look here comes mickey for photo ops just oh kidding God. here's your here's your papers <laughs> oh gosh yeah <laughs> The resort opened with great reception. Not only was a monorail system out of this world, but it went through a hotel. Having it pass through a lobby where it would stop to pick up passengers was groundbreaking and to this day still an amazing sight. The Contemporary originally had three main buildings, the North Garden Wing, the Tower, and the South Garden Wing. The Tower housed the lobby, shops, restaurants, and amazing monorail stop. Guests had a choice of staying in any three of the towers, but of course, the Tower was the most popular of the choices. In 2007, the North Garden Wing was converted to Bay Lake Tower, which is exclusively for Disney Vacation Club members only, and opened in 2009. Bay Lake Tower does use a contemporary for their front desk, bell service, and transportation center. The contemporary resort opened with a supper club-style restaurant that was located on the 15th floor of the resort named Top of the World. It served Sunday brunch, lunch, and dinner, and hosted a popular show every night. The restaurant was removed in 1993 and replaced with the California Grill. The California Grill is a fine dining establishment that has amazing views of the fireworks at night. In 1994, inside the Grand Canyon Concourse, the Concourse Steakhouse opened. In 2008, this steakhouse was replaced with the Contempo Cafe, a quick service restaurant. Across from Contempo Cafe is the Outer Rim, a cocktail lounge that offers wine, beer, and of course, cocktails. On the first floor, there was a convention area turned into a giant arcade and movie theater center called Fiesta Fun Center. This area was gradually scaled back until 2008, when it was replaced with the Wave of American Flavor, a casual full-service restaurant that offers a bar area with signature cocktails. The game room was relocated to the fourth floor and called simply The Game Room. Okay, so The Wave, we just did an episode on The Wave. Yep. It was episode uh, 86 of the Diz His podcast. Great episode. We love the restaurant. Have you, have you guys, I know Jen has been there. We kind of had done a whole episode on it, but Andrew, have you been there? I have. Yeah, I've ate there a couple of times. And Fantastic. You, yeah, oh, right. That's for, wonderful. Because that's usually, that's uh, like uh, Alex just mentioned, uh, that's where the um, fast food, I'm sorry, not fast food, uh, the quick service dining used to be down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, gosh, when they got gutted and that restaurant took its place, my goodness, just fantastic uh, yeah. switch that that was. Um, you know, it, it, it's no windows or anything. So it's got this mood lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, oh, it's, it's wonderful. It's a fantastic place. Don't go there every trip, but it's definitely like one of those every other trip that we uh, like to do, um, usually on the first night of our arrival to uh, Disney World. Because it's easy, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's definitely easy. Yeah. yeah we, we've got this, uh, our family has this tradition where we like to go on like a monorail ride. Like you check into your hotel, somehow get to the Magic Kingdom um, uh, Transportation and Ticket Center. Yeah, and like do a monorail ride and maybe just hop off at like Polynesian Grand and just look in the lobbies and stuff. Usually we have dinner there before we go and uh, do a nightcap over at the Disney Springs. And then we go to the parks the next day. Mm -hmm. So no rest and relaxation the day before uh, Magic Kingdom for us. So, hey, funny you say that. Did you see some couple just posted 
that they uh, did all this in one day. They were they were they're in New Jersey, right? They took a flight. They landed in Orlando, Florida at six a.m. They from six a.m. right? They went to all the parks. They went to Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, right? Then they took a flight back to back home to New Jersey. Did it all in one day. And they posted all they posted it all like on uh, social media. That's nuts. It is crazy. But sorry, sorry to get off topic. I, I just wanted to you know kind of tell you guys that. But let's talk about California Grill. Let's yeah. talk about California Grill. Let's talk about California Grill. Have you eaten there, Joe? I have eaten there. I've eaten there on my 10 year anniversary. Went to California Grill. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's a fantastic restaurant. Uh, have you eaten there, Jen? I have not. Uh, my daughter went recently with a friend of hers. He um, took her, it was his birthday, um, and he asked her to go with. And they both said, hands down, it was probably the best meal that they have ever had on property ever. So um, they kind of tried everything, um, almost kind of like tapas style. You know, they ordered a little bit of whatever and they just had the greatest time. And she really kind of likes the fact that she can rub that in my face that she went somewhere before me. <laughs> Have you been there, Andrew? Ate there for the first time on our, uh, my wife, Bethany and I, uh, on our honeymoon. It was the first time we ate there. Had a table right beside the window uh, in the evening. So our dinner took place during wishes. Nice. Oh, that's cool. And the, the funniest, the, the amazing experience, um, fantastic food. The one thing I remember definitely from that uh, night is that my wife at the time did not like seafood at all. Wouldn't touch anything. The waiter told us that the sushi chef, did I say that right? Sushi chef. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like ranked not only like number one in Florida, but like number two on like the Eastern Seaboard. I mean, just oh, like wow. this really top chef. And that's him, right? Like right over there. So, and he pointed. And so we're <laughs> like, well, if we're ever, and I've never had, su- and I'm a big seafood person. I had never had sushi until oh. that point. So we're like, hey, if we're going to get sushi, we're going to get it now. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so take, your, take your hand, slap it on the table. and like, one sushi, please. One and sushi. They, he brings out a roll and you know, you know, some folks like this roll and stuff. We we didn't want to go too extreme, so we got a uh, we got a California roll, which is which is very rare in the sushi world. I'm kidding; it's like the most California grill, California roll one. makes sense. California California roll. That's it, like your standard sushi. That's like your yes. your entry level sushi is a California. It's roll. It's like a cheese pizza. Absolutely. Yes, great, great I was analogy. Say hamburger, but yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. So they put down the sushi, you know, the the roll, and we've got the soy sauce and the the wasabi, the green stuff. And it was amazing. And from that point on, it turned my wife into a seafood lover that she is today. Oh, wow. Did she, oh, really? So I was going to say, like, touch us at all. We went to New Orleans last year. She didn't touch crawfish. I love crawfish, mm-hmm. um, Asian crawfish. But uh, I, uh, man, wait, maybe one of these days, we'll see. But yeah, that was one night, one uh, part of that meal that I uh, definitely remember to this day and still bring up when we have sushi. Awesome. That's cool. stuff, so yeah. <laughs> kind of sets the bar way too high oh, for yeah. your uh, average uh, sushi uh, restaurant, you know, in town. Oh, now I'm the one, oh yeah. Now I'm the one that goes into Kroger and I look at him like, Oh, all right. <laughs> just <type> right in. <laughs> But it's got the p- perfect view. I mean, they take the music and they, 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 uh, they play it uh, over the speakers at dinner and they you know, tone down the lights. Um, that way, you know, you can see the fireworks. And they've got that perfect balcony, you know, outside yep. that you can watch it on. Uh, I've seen two Fourth of Julys from up there oh, during nice. dinner over the last several years. And you've got the 360 fireworks and, oh, you can see, you know, everything from that um, from that high up. Uh, Spaceship Earth, Hollywood yep. Tower of Terror. Um, it's amazing. It's fantastic. That's why yeah. it's, Jen, like a great resort. <laughs> <laughs> The Contemporary was built as a hotel for guests, but it also specialized as a convention center, offering 10 rooms for convention spaces. There are many facilities inside the hotel, like a fitness center, two gift shops, and a market called Fantasia. There's even a child interactive experience called Pixar Play Zone. From 6 p.m. till 10.30 p.m., kids ages 4 to 12 enjoy a night of activities, fun games, dinner, and character encounters. This experience costs $65. Another great place for kids and even adults is Chef Mickey's. This all-you-care-to-eat breakfast with Mickey and friends is offered every morning in the Grand Canyon Concourse fourth floor. 
This location has a great view of the monorail passing overhead. Outside the resort, there are two pools. One of these has a 17-foot high curving slide. The other is shallow around the edges and deeper in the center. By the pools is a sandbar. This bar serves burgers, sandwiches, ice cream, beer, wine, and cocktails, and has seasonal hours. Cabanas are available nearby and require daily or hourly rentals. Inside the cabanas are a TV, docking station, resort phone, and mini fridge. There is a children's water play area and two whirlpools, which were added in 2009. Other outside facilities are a beach volleyball area, a tennis court, and a basketball court. Pricing to stay at the Contemporary Resort ranges month to month. The Garden Wing offers standard and garden views, as well as king or deluxe rooms. These prices range from $500 to $1,000. The main tower offers a lake view or theme park view, as well as an atrium club level. These rooms range from $700 to $1,600. There are also Garden Wing and Bay Lake View suites, which range from $1,400 to $4,700. There's a reason why we, we use the Bay Lake Tower option after looking at those prices. <laughs> It's expensive to stay there. And there's no doubt about it. Chef Mickey's. I listen. I love Chef Mickey's. And I think one of the reasons why I love Chef Mickey's is once again going there when I was younger and seeing Chef Mickey's. And like, I want to eat here. You know what? That to me, that was like one of the. I think one of those restaurants that. I mean, ha, when do you get to see all the characters and eat with them? Yeah. I mean, now they do it all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. But still, at a time where I was just younger, I didn't really understand that. I'm not even sure if they even had the options at the other places, but I always wanted to eat there. And I think the first time I, I did ever eat there was, was with you, Jen, in your family. With one of, for one of the kids' birthdays, I assume, right? Yeah, yeah. One of the kids' birthdays. And I wasn't a huge fan of it then, you know, uh, but the, I've been there a couple more times since then. And I love it. I love Chef Mickey's, you know, the, the, I like the food. I'm not, I, I don't know. I like the food. I like when, when the characters come out and they all start dancing. And now it's even better now that I have my son, you know, he gets to enjoy it. And he has, the, we've been there a couple of times with him. We, his birthday is pretty much right. His birthday is October 30th. Mine's October 29th. So we kind of have the same birthday. Uh, you know, we celebrate there at Chef Mickey's for the last couple of years. Um, so it's just, I love it. I love Chef Mickey's. If you want to listen more, know more about Chef Mickey's, we did episode 48 on Chef Mickey's. Cool. Awesome. I didn't know that. Was I there? Yeah, you were there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> See, it's funny because my experience with Chef Mickey's is slightly different. You know, it's, I, I don't want to say that we've outgrown it, but you know, we did have probably one of our least, um, desirable experiences with dining at Chef Mickey's for my son's first birthday. I mean, we've been back since and it's okay. Um, but if you were to tell me side by side, I could eat at Chef Mickey's or I could eat at the wave, the wave would win hands down just because of the food. But you know, the difference being I have older kids. So I'm an older kid. <laughs> I'll, I'll still eat at Chef Mickey's over the, I love the wave. Don't get me wrong, but I would eat at Chef Mickey's. I can't wait to eat Chef Mickey's. I love all you can eat, all you care to eat. And I think that's our problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Andrew, man? Do you like Chef Mickey's? Chef Mickey's is a rite of passage that every Disney guest should at least do once in their entire lives. I think that I should be like agree their, with that. I think that should be like their, lo like their slogan. No, I mean, Chef Mickey's, you, know, you meet a family that has never been to Disney World. What do they do? They go to Chef Mickey's. Yeah. How right. was your trip? Yeah. We went to Chef Mickey's. It's definitely something. I mean, they were definitely the first to do the character dining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, see Mickey and all the gang. You know, we can we can talk and, you know, have different opinions on like the quality of food and stuff. Because let's let's face it, I think everyone that is listening to this um, now and in the future, they're Disney readers and they are Disney listeners as well. And they know that there's been a history with the quality of food, you know, here and there. I hear it's gotten significantly better. Not that it was ever bad to begin with. I can never remember not having a good meal there. But I think you're right. As you grow older, you know, your experiences do change. However, um, I think it definitely is a lot different once you see it again through the eyes of a child. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it really hits back home to you. And you're like, yeah, this was worth it. Yeah, every I think single, you're right. Every yeah. single penny. Yep. I will agree with that. Definitely. <laughs> It's the experience there is you can it's almost like you can throw those uh, you can throw Disney restaurants into a couple of different categories, experiences versus food. I would definitely put Chef Mickey's in one of those 
much higher in the experience um, bracket than in the food bracket. You know, you that's what you go for kind of thing. Exactly. Quick fire, quick facts. Let's go. The resort rooms were put together three miles from the hotel at a rate of approximately 15 per day. The Contemporary was originally named Tempo Bay Hotel, but was changed during construction. Bay Lake Tower guests are allowed to use the services at the main Contemporary, but Contemporary guests are not allowed to use the Bay Lake facilities. On November 17, 1973, then-President Nixon made a vacation stop at the Contemporary Hotel for a press conference. And in the ballroom of the Americas, he gave his most famous quote, I am not a crook. The Contemporary has a wall of air conditioning units that produce a wall of air to prevent bugs and birds from flying into the atrium. Top of the World Lounge was recreated atop of Bay Lake Tower, but only DVC members are allowed entrance after 5 p.m. Or the Top of the World Lounge. I love the Top of the World Lounge. I think we should do an episode on Bay Lake Tower and the Top of the World Lounge because it is uh, is really cool. Have you guys, Jen, you've been there. I've been there with you. I don't think Alex has been there. Andrew, nope. have you been there? Okay, so I was getting ready to ask, Top of the World Lounge, are you talking about the show featuring entertainers at the top of the contemporary where um, California Grill is now? But I just realized that's a, not a, and not at all what you're talking about. This is a, um, a lounge at the top of Bay Lake Tower. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they, so they derived the name from the old Top of the World at the Contemporary Resort, the, you know, when it first opened. Yes, so there's that like is this correct. little musical review. Okay. I have never been there. Are, are you allowed to get, if you're not in DVC, can you get in? You can go with a guest. Like if you a have a friend. Yeah. If you have a, if, if you have a friend I that's knew, staying on if, property. Only I knew someone. Who Andrew, man, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, you and I will go next time. Hey, there you are. Yeah, for DVC. sure, man. No doubt about it. Hey, <laughs> you can give me access to the club over at Epcot too, can't you? Yes, I can. I've always wanted to take that flight of stairs into heaven and see exactly what you <laughs> folks do. I've been there. It's nice. Up there. With free, free, you get free soft drinks? Yes. 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 Oh, and little and snack bags. The cookies. I yeah. bet are amazing. So you can take them, you can take them to the top of the world and get the seven layer cake. Oh my gosh. It's so good. Is there food, like food food or is it just like, you know, bar food? It's a few appetizers. Um, they had some desserts, full bar, some signature drinks. They and views over the Magic Kingdom. Yes. Yeah, so the big thing is um, it gets very full about the time of fireworks. There is a balcony that people go out on. Um, they And then they pipe in the music. Um, something that was really nice that they did um, once was, you know, they sometimes you have kids that are pretty scared of fireworks. And it was nice because, you know, they pipe the music outside well of course you hear the fireworks they're pretty loud you've got this great unobstructed view but for anybody who's got the child that's afraid of fireworks you know they're floor-to-ceiling windows and so it's nice because you can bring you know the kiddos inside they still can pretty much see everything the music's piped in the adults that can still see they don't really miss out so that's it's a really nice kind of option for them but it does historically it will completely fill to the brim standing room only fighting for a table kind of thing and then once the fireworks are over it's almost like a ghost town and then that's the perfect time to go get your drink and your uh seven layer cake joe, joe i don't know if you can see it or not but i just ordered on amazon my uh i'm with him shirt with an arrow pointing this way <laughs> <laughs> but i'll be sporting when i when you take me up there to the top floor uh fall 2021 Sounds it's good, definitely man. it's an experience <laughs> i would i would recommend anybody go it's it's a lot of fun yeah. Quick memory I have up there. Jen's talking about, you know, kids and they have that, that you can go inside and take the kids inside. And you can still kind of enjoy the fireworks. Uh, and we went there. I think it was with you, Jen, and uh, had my 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 son and he was younger at the time and he was getting kind of nervous with the fireworks. I brought him inside. You know, they kind of put the lights down. I'm sitting there, you know, with him. We're watching the fireworks from the inside and a waiter comes around and he has some wine. He has like a glass of wine and he I guess he can't find who to bring it to. I guess the person left. So he comes up to me. He's like, hey, he's like, I think you need this. And he gave me a, fr- a free glass of wine. He, he goes, I think you need I was like, wow, that's super awesome. That's super nice. He gave me a free glass of wine. A little bit of Disney magic for yeah, you. Yeah, no doubt about it. Hey, I remember it was, it was a cool memory for sure. And I was like, man, that's, that's awesome. pretty cool. Yeah. The Contemporary Resort is an amazing accomplishment for today, let alone 1971. Walt was a visionary, and he made sure what he envisioned came to be. A high-class resort that looks futuristic in style, with a monorail passing through the middle. 
If you have the opportunity to stay at this resort, we here at Diz His recommend it. Ever roll out of bed and feel like being a little bad? Three Cheeky Chicks Wax Company has you covered with their Villain Wax Melt line. The Sea Hag Melt will have you wanting to use that body language like Ursula with its bouquet of roses, lily, lilacs, and sweet violets with undernotes of musk. If you feel like you're going to have a meltdown like Hades, throw in the Wax Melt Ruler of the Underworld, which will fill your home with smells of lavender, rosemary, lemon verbena, cinnamon, coriander, leather, amber, and hints of smoke. Or, if you just feel like you are just the evilest one of all, get yourself the Mistress of Evil Melt. These Maleficent-inspired melts will release a woodsy scent with its crisp pine needles, white fir, clove, patchouli, oak, and sugar pine. No matter how you're feeling, make sure to visit MagicallyScented.com to purchase a wide range of wax melts, candles, and room sprays, all made by three cheeky chicks. There are plenty of holiday sales that will allow you to buy any smell that fits your attitude. That's three cheeky chicks at MagicallyScented.com. Memories, memories. Alex, you want to go ahead and uh, share your memory? Um, I don't have a memory for staying there, but of course, like a lot of you, when you go to Disney the first time and you get on the monorail system and you see it coming up, you're like, oh my God, are we going through that building right now? And you go through it and it's, it's amazing to go through a building on a monorail, although it'll be on a monorail by itself. You know, when you, usually when you're going there for the first time, you're a kid, but even if you're an adult, it's still an amazing experience to be on a monorail system going through the contemporary. Mm-hmm. Okay, how about you, Jen? So, I, you know, I don't have any like a super, super specific. I mean, obviously, I remember being a kid and just staring up at awe at the, you know, at the building and, and just, you know, that being like an equivalent of, you know, that is a Disney vacation to see it. But my funny memory is from um, and it's something that we still kind of do to this day and the kids groan is any time that we've gone over there to eat or to stay or, or anything like that. Um, you know, you go under you go under the um, that canal that connects the two waterways. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we're always saying, all right, hold your breath. We're getting ready to go underwater. And, you know, when they're little, they think it's funny. But now that they're like teenagers, they groan and they're like, oh, my God. But you catch them and they do it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like this thing that we've gotten green that hopefully they'll pass on to their kids. So every single time it's hold your breath. We're going underwater. Cool. Okay. How about you, Andrew? You know what? Something that I do a lot when my wife and I uh, travel around uh, our tri-state area between Cincinnati, Columbus, Ohio, and here where we live in Indianapolis Whatever hotel we stay at, and we kind of like staying in hotels, anytime we walk into the uh, lobby, we're like, well, this isn't Disney. (laughs) It's one of those things. And the contemporary contemporary is that hotel that is so unique in so many ways. You know, on the Mount Rushmore of Disney Imagineers, Mary Blair, who was Walt Disney's favorite Imagineer, has this huge mosaic, you know, the painting, you know, that goes up and sticks with you for your entire life. You walk down the hallways, uh, you get, there, there's that smell, you know, the freshly uh, uh, shampooed carpets from uh, early that morning. You have the views of outside your balcony. My favorite, view, my favorite room, though, actually, to all of your, probably your surprise, isn't of the Magic Kingdom. My favorite room is actually on the uh, south wing, one of the garden view rooms. It's a little bit more bigger. They come with a great bathroom, um, as well as a balcony that overlooks uh, Bay Lake or even the uh, water taxi bridge um, that connects uh, both Bay Lake and Seven Seas Lagoon. So that's probably my favorite room of all of, out of all of Walt Disney World is right there. But you have the dining, the lounge that sits right beside um, Chef Mickey's that overlooks Bay Lake, um, the elevator that goes up and down from uh, the California Grill all the way to the bottom, um, to the lobby area. You've got the convention hall side, everything that surrounds the contemporary, whether it's the Magic Kingdom, Seven Seas Lagoon, the transportation uh, via watercraft over to the Wilderness Lodge or to see the hoop de doo over at Fort, Fort Wilderness Campground. Everything that encompasses the contemporary resort hits me in every sense possible. And that's why I think it's my number one favorite resort. The memories between our young kids to now, it's priceless. It's a priceless gem that'll last for another 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Jen is in the top three now. All right, here we go. So I put much thought into this and I, <laughs> you guys don't want to hear my memory. 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm wait. Stop it. I'm selling here. <laughs> Joe, I'm selling. Wait, get, get wait, 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 wait. No, Top we got to do, we got to do Joe. We got to do Joe. Okay. All right. I'll, okay. I'll stop. It's so a quick memory so we, can, so we can go ahead and hear Jen's top five. But, you know, we got to, I know this is at Bay Lake, but my wife and I got to spend our 10 year anniversary at Bay Lake. But, you know, we got to eat at the California Grill. We had a wonderful meal there. Um, we, we sat next to another couple that was celebrating like their uh, 40th wedding anniversary. Uh, so I'll always remember that. That's a special memory. But I'll also remember the next morning, like, you know, we spent the night over there. And the next morning we got up early and we headed over to the poly. So it was real cool, you know, waking up and then just going downstairs and jumping on the monorail and taking that trip over to Polynesian Resort and eating breakfast over at the Kona Cafe. I had my Tonga toast, which is amazing. And then jumping back on the monorail and going back to Bay Lake, you know. Uh, oh, actually, you know, I think what we did was we, when we were eating at uh, uh, Kona Cafe, we checked the wait time for Big Thunder Mountain. And it was early in the morning, right? So we're like, you know, let's just go run over to Big, ride Big Thunder. So we run in the monorail, went to Magic Kingdom, rode uh, Big Thunder Mountain a couple of times, whatever. I think we rode Big Thunder and then uh, Mine Train. And then we went back to Bay Lake uh, Tower. And it was just a cool memory. Just jumping on that monorail. I was like, right there. The monorail is right there. It's awesome. So you can go to Magic Kingdom. You can go to the Poly. You can go wherever you want. It's cool. That's my memory. <laughs> okay, Jen, come on. Let's go. Give me the top five. What's the top five? All right. All right. All right. So you guys know my number one is Wilderness Lodge. Always has been. That's so a great resort. It is. It is. Um, we, we stay there for our honeymoon and just loved it. So um, now number two is a new addition. And that's where things got a little mixed up because um, we just stayed out at Riviera. And that is gorgeous. Um, it, I just loved everything about it. That's I don't number have two? It. That's number two. Okay. All right. Um, followed by the the grand, because after staying out there, that was never one that was on my to do list. Uh, but it after staying out there, it's like, wow, yeah, I could get used to this. Um, it's also the only place I've ever stayed that's had a TV in the bathroom mirror. And that's kind of cool. So where was this? At? Oh, that where? was the Grand Floridian. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think you so, about the one in. Hey, just a real, real, real quick question: What? Uh, where was your room at at the Grand? Because we you know were, that, that, it's kind of spread out there. We were in the DVC villas because we also own DVC. So, new, um, okay, so okay, so the new new villas that open. Yeah, and um, okay. but it was nice yeah. because we had we were on the ground floor, which I'm never a really a huge fan of that, but we had this gorgeous view of the Polynesian and uh, a quick walk over to the main building, and like I said, a TV uh, in the bathroom mirror, which is just kind of a novelty to me. So, so that made number three. Now, here's where I'm gonna go. We the walk to the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> the transportation, <laughs> the food, the views, so, so the jazz music as you're walking into the lobby. So here's why here's why there is a tie between the poly and the contemporary, because oh. they're two very different experiences. I told you I'd crack her in the top five. <laughs> they're very different experiences, completely and totally contingent on like what you're looking for. If you're in the mood, you know, to kind of feel a little more tropical, you know, the poly's definitely it. If you're wanting to just kind of do a little bit of a futuristic or, you know, that kind of quintessential, I'm here, this is my, you know, iconic Disney vacation, it's the contemporary. Temporary. I like both of them. I couldn't pick one over the other after staying at both of them, you know, recently. So I'm going to go with their tie. So I guess you could say it's moved up to four. Be sure to follow our social media, Diz His 65 on Twitter and Instagram. And relatively new, we have a Twitch stream account. Just go to twitch.tv. That's T-W-I-T-C-H dot TV and search Diz His. Be sure to follow us so you are notified when we start to stream. We sometimes put up spotlights and old episodes, but the best thing is Joe live streaming classic Disney games like Aladdin and Lion King. Sometimes our friend Remy from Remy's Roundtable will drop by to give us some Disney news. Just follow us and jump in when we are live. Joe loves to chat with fans, so start messaging away. You also never know who may stop by for a hang. That's Diz His on Twitch. So this week, Disney, uh, I know I watched some DuckTales. So, you know, I'm a teacher. So we had some like a fun Friday type of event. Uh, so the, the students who were turning in their work got to come to uh, like a lunch bunch and we watched DuckTales. So we watched about two episodes. The kids loved it. We watched the newer ones. They were great. Of course, watched WandaVision. 
you know, can't wait for uh, for the new ones to come out. Uh, loved it. Uh, also did a spotlight with the young professor. Uh, he he was on our episode uh, with uh, Disney Wild World of, Wide World of Sports. Uh, it was a lot of fun. So look for that on our dizhis.com. Just go to the virtual spotlights tab. Check it out. It was a lot of fun. He's a real cool guy. That's pretty much what I did. I didn't really do too much, I guess. Um, how about you, Alex? What'd you do? Uh, we didn't do too much. We've been watching uh, some shows. So uh, I've said we watch some Disney shows. Uh, this is how deep I'm into these Disney shows right now. So we're watching Jesse, which is, and we're watching Liv and Maddie, both star kids from Descendants. And then my wife's like, hey, Bucky from Zombies, another shit movie we like, is on Bunked. So let's watch, let's watch Bunked. So we put on episode one of Bunked. And Bunked, which, by the way, I don't know if you're aware of this, this show has been on since 20. 20- 15. It's been on for six years already, the show, which is crazy. They, it starts out with stars from Jesse. They stopped on Jesse and they continued on Bunked. And I was like, no, we can't watch this because I don't know what happens on Jesse. We're on season one of Jesse. I can't watch Bunked with people from Jesse before I understand how they got there. So I was like, no, we can't watch Jesse. We can't watch You're Bunked indeed, yet. Man. We can't watch I Bunked yet. I was just going to say, wow, he is so <laughs> invested. So I said, no, we can't do it. <laughs> Can you imagine their dinner conversations, <laughs> Alex and Christina? <laughs> you know, just going back and thinking about, you know, I just can't get over what happened on Jesse the other day. And I'm just so <laughs> glad that we didn't go ahead with Bunked. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> okay. How about you, Jen? Uh, not, I've, I've had a, I've had a rough week. I mean, I know that Joe knows that and Alex knows that we, um, we lost our dog this week and it was sudden and it was very sad. So I'm not going to say I did a whole heck of a lot, but, um, we did watch WandaVision and we do like that a Mm -hmm. lot. Um, we're very, very invested in it. My son and I will, um, we're kind of almost a house divided because my son and I will watch it and we will immediately go online and we will look at um, conspiracy theories or how things are all connected or, you know, people go crazy on TikTok with uh, everything Um, and, and the stuff that they put together, you know, finding the little Easter eggs and things like that. It's just kind of amazing. But my husband doesn't want anything to do with that. He wants to learn about what's going on organically. So he will like shut us down and, and, you know, nope, don't talk about it in front of me kind of, thing and and so that's how we're kind of divided with that um and then other than that you know something i never mention and i'm gonna go ahead and mention it because um i feel like you know with andrew here i gotta plug it you know source for radio is kind of something i work from home and um yeah i have to have music on to keep me kind of focused otherwise you know i'm like you know oh look a chicken and and source for radio is one of those things that it's always on in the house it's it's on in the background it's on when i'm working and so i and i always forget to mention that so it's a big kind of you know thing that you should probably say what you did in the world of disney because it's always there and it's great content i'm always really happy with it so thumbs up to that yeah i can't wait for i can't wait for tomorrow go ahead andrew what did you do in the world of disney what's wandavision get out of here are you serious <laughs> no, no 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 he's joking not, Sam, what are you talking about no i'm not joking what are you guys talking about one division has to show on Disney Plus. Are you okay. a big Marvel all right, fan? All right, all right, all right. I'll be a little honest now. I've I've heard of it. <laughs> I, I know what you. I know exactly what you guys are talking about. It, it's from the Marvel. It's from Marvel, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. I'm being serious yeah. now. Now I don't know if you're serious or not, man. <laughs> all right. Everything I'm saying from now on is being serious. I, I've never seen an episode. Oh man, do you like Marvel? Are you ready for this? Oh no, <laughs> we might have to. We might have to. I, I, I can out so, room, I, right? I'm not saying I don't like Marvel. I think it's amazing. <laughs> I've only seen one Marvel movie. Oh, what you need to go happening? watch them all, man. What are you doing? I saw Avengers in theaters. That's the last time I saw it. Which one? Uh, oh, gosh, there's more than one. Um, <laughs> the one that... Uh, gosh, what was the one? Well, they, they were all there. They were all in the movie yeah. and, and stuff. Oh, man, you should go back I'm and sorry, watch I've got, our, our oldest was born in 2012, and we didn't get to go to the movies that much. So um, uh-huh. I am... Uh, one of these week, we were going to do it back when the pandemic first started. We were going to watch everything in order, like chronological order mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, kind of like Star Wars, where you watch it from yep. episode one and stuff. But we just had not gotten around to it. Just been too busy. And I, every time I turn and say, hey, want to watch a Marvel movie? I get the, uh, no, let's watch uh, Cinderella or well, let's watch Sleeping Beauty. Something else on Disney Plus, basically, hey, is let, what it comes to. Let me I know. need to watch it. I need I know, to watch hey, it. And, and, 
Hey, everyone at work, everyone at work's talking about WandaVision. I'm the only person that's kind of not in my head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, this is the they because I'm such a, you know, they said they say it's a perfect show for me because it doesn't, it, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. It takes place like, it's like a 1950s show, right? Well, kind of, it, at it one kind of point. Like Certain episodes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So everything changes. So then you get something that looks like I Love Lucy. Then mm-hmm. it's like, maybe like, the um, I don't know, like something from the 70s or something like that, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm being serious. No, no, you're right. You're right. That's I what happened. Say, okay. um, do I need to watch the Marvel movies to watch oh, yes. the show? Yes. yes. Do not 100%. watch the show without watching the Marvel movies. 100%. There's a lot of Marvel movies out there. There's a lot. But every time- I, I, I'm a huge Marvel fan. I, I think everything's, all those movies are fantastic. You know, from what I've seen, they're fantastic. Just have not seen it. There's good news. There's good news about this, okay? Is that you are going to be blown away by these Marvel movies. So you have something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. But what did you do in the world of Disney? I mean, what did you do this weekend? Well, this is, well uh, like Jen says, Jen, thanks so much for that plug for Source of Radio. Um, yeah, I got Source of Radio on. Um, fairly consistent at work and both at home. Love listening to Source of Radio on the weekends. It's the perfect thing to listen to the main channel, in my opinion, on Saturday mornings as you start that coffee pot. I think it's exactly kind of a routine of ours. Uh, you know, the kids are playing and just have Source of Radio on in the background. Um, Source of Radio actually celebrated 20 years this past week. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's uh, it's it's really something that uh, station has gone on so long and hopefully lasts for another 20 years. I uh, am really proud of the fact that the station started a new channel called Rope Drop, which features music from both attractions as well as um, uh, music from, uh, you know, different rides, different uh, resorts um, getting a lot of uh, good input from our listeners. Um, it was supposed to be just a limited run channel for just a few months of this type of audio that you could listen to. But, you know, listeners uh, talked and we listened as far as making it its own channel. So, yeah, um, it's a really cool channel. I too. definitely encourage everyone to download Source of Radio on the App Store and uh, listen to some good Disney music. But that's that was one aspect. Um, last weekend, we watched uh, Star Wars episode episodes three and four back to back. That was what our that's what we did. Our awesome. kids are really into Star Wars right now. Yeah. So that's the his on the Contemporary Resort. I'm Joe. I'm Alex. I'm Jen. And this is Andrew. Thanks for listening and have a magical week. Please follow us on all social media by searching Diz His 65 Share us and subscribe to our podcast to get the latest show when it is available. If you want to help us out, get tips, get your memories shared on the podcast, see pictures and videos of what we are up to at the parks, join our goof troop on Patreon.com and search for Diz His.